What is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can save data to our iOS device. And this will also persist if we turn off and turn on the device. And it's going to be a very simple way to store primitive data, such as if we want to store a number or a string or a Boolean, we can do that with the help of user defaults. So for example, if we go ahead and type in this is a string and we click on save data, it's going to save the data here. And if we go to our device and restart the device, and then we navigate to our app and open it, the string is still going to be there. And we can also type in something else like the number 12 and save the data, and it's going to be there. If we close the emulator, go to our app and restart it, we're going to have the same value on our device. As you can see right here, we have 12 exactly where we left it. And as a bonus, I went ahead and added a letter counter because it's always cool to know how to create these features. So if we go ahead and type in, this is a way to count the amount of characters in our string. And I also made it turn red after 30 characters. So that's a cool feature to look forward to when we're creating this example app. Now if we click on save data we're going to notice that the save data is right there. And every time we reopen the app, we're still going to have this string there because that's what we decided to save. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a new project. So go ahead and click on file, new and new project, or you can do command shift plus N. And this will take us to this tab over here where we can click on app and next, and then we will give it a product name. I will just call it something such as saving app. And you can call it whatever you want, of course. Make sure you have an organization identifier and it should be on Swift UI for the interface and we will be using Swift for the language. Then we can go ahead and click on next. Then go ahead and pick a place that you want to save this project. I have a file called Xcode projects and I will just place it inside there. So the first thing we're going to do inside here is close this tab here, change this to an iPhone 13 and click on resume to render a preview. We will also make this smaller and close the left tab so we have more space to actually edit the code. And let's also make this much smaller since it's just a preview. So we want to start off with the project just like this. And the first thing we're going to get into is creating a state object. So here we'll go ahead and type in state var text and this is going to be the text that we will save. So it's of type string of course and that's going to equal user defaults dot standard dot string and we need to specify the key that we are looking for and in this example we're going to provide the key of text underscore key and this must be unique so make sure when you have keys that each name is unique otherwise if they mix up you're going to get results that you do not want and since this might return a nil value we have to go ahead and use the nil coalescing operator and return nothing if there is nothing there so this is going to be loaded each time we start the app and it's going to look for this key over here next we're going to go ahead and create another state variable which is going to be input text because we want this to actually update the number counter as we do stuff so here we go of type string which will be set to the default value of an empty string. Next, let's go ahead and start editing the body of our app. So the first thing we want to do is provide a form. And inside the form, we're going to start with a section. And the section is going to take a header, which is going to be a text box with the value of input. And we need to create a box for that. Now inside here, we're going to go ahead and specify a text field and it's going to have a string of add some text here. And the text is going to be a binding variable of input text. So as you can see, now we have a small input box in our preview. Next, we're going to go ahead and create the section that counts the characters. So section, add the header as always, and that's going to take a text of letter count. And this is actually going to take some very simple logic. So we're going to start with creating a character count variable, which is going to equal the input text dot filter. And we want to filter all of the letters that are not an empty space. So inside here, we need to add the placeholder dollar sign with a zero. And we're going to say where that is not equal to an empty string, which is just a space. And we want to get the dot count of that. Now we're going to go ahead and 
check if the character count is more than 30 characters. Then we're going to go ahead and return a text view, which is going to take the string of the character count because a text view requires a string. So we need to pass it before using it. And if it is more than 30 letters, we're going to make it of a foreground color of red. So it just shows the user that they're typing a bit too much. Else, we're going to go ahead and specify that the input text, if it is equal to nothing or an empty string, we're going to return the text empty. And with the Elvis operator, we can add this double dot. And if it is not empty, we're going to go ahead and add the text and the string of the character count. So just as a reminder, this is just a quick if else statement by using the Elvis operator, we have a question mark and a double dot. If this evaluates to true, we're going to return the empty text. Otherwise, if it evaluates to false, we're going to return this text string character count. And we can actually go ahead and run the app right now to see that it's actually counting the letters. So right now we have nothing in there. If we go ahead and type in, this is a string, you'll notice that it's going to count the characters. And if we add some spaces, it's not going to care. It is also going to count the punctuation marks, but it will not count the spaces. But now it's time to implement the saving feature. So let's go ahead and create a section with the header of text. And here we're going to provide the call of actions because we want to provide a button that saves the user data. So inside here, we'll create a button with the title of save data. And now we can actually go ahead and provide user defaults dot standard and we want to set a value so we will call set and we need to provide the value that we want to set which is input text and we need to provide the key we want to set it for which as you may recall we created one that's called text underscore key so this one here has to match the one that we are retrieving it from next we're going to go ahead and type that the text is equal to the input text. And finally, so we can log and check if something actually happened, we're going to go ahead and print saved value double dot backslash parentheses and inside there we will insert the input text. And of course, this is useless unless we can actually see the updates. So let's go ahead and create one more section which takes a header of text. And inside here we will type in saved data. Then we can go ahead and just insert a text block, which will have a text. And we also want to provide a line limit of three, which means up to three lines will be shown in this letterbox. And you can increase this to as many as you want. I'm just going to set three for this example. But now if we actually go ahead and rerun the project, we're going to have the full app here and we didn't save anything. So we're not going to get anything down here. But if we add some text such as this will be saved for later, please let me do my work and save this. So as you can see, I wrote a lot there. It says letter count is 55. And when we click on save data, it's going to place it inside here. Now if we go ahead and restart this device, you're going to notice that when we go back to our saving app, we're still going to have the text from earlier. So we can even close this and reopen the app and it will still be there. So our text is persisting. We can even go ahead and type a number such as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero. Click on save the data. Then we can go back to our project and rerun this project. And you're going to notice that the data has persisted and that the number has updated down below. Now, as a disclaimer, this actually does take a moment to compute. So if the user leaves the app immediately or something's happening too fast, it might not have time to save the value. So you need to make sure that you give the program a moment to actually save the value. And it's also very important you do not use this for large amounts of data because it has to retrieve this as you open the app. And if there's too much data, that can really slow down your app. So make sure you use this for small amounts of data, such as usernames or for numbers or something very simple like booleans that don't require a lot of data. But with that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.